Good day, friends and subscribers. I'm coming to you today from something that came as an inspiration to me yesterday. In the midst of trial and tribulation, God revealed to me something about what we are called to do on a daily basis. Like, what is the most important thing that we are to do as in everything, believer, non-believer, body of Christ, non-body of Christ, like as a human being, what are we called to do? First and foremost, we, when we were born here on this earth, there began a separation from our very creator, from whom we were made in the image of. Uh, there's so much about us that is beckoning us to go back to who our father to who the creator is and it is sin the fallen man that separates us from who we are in Christ from who we are in in our very nature our spirit that which is within this house shall we have what is it we are called to do? So what is it that God put on us to do right from the beginning of time? Worship. Worshiping him. And what is worshiping? When we think of the fear of God, we know that that is reverence and awe. When we think about not having sin separating us, we think about intimacy, we think about closeness, we think about having communion with the Father, with the Spirit. So worshiping, and we talk about worshiping in spirit and truth, it is worshiping God the Father, God the Son, through the Holy Spirit. It is not about worshiping that which we live in. That which we I love it when I have an interruption during my videos. So it is not about anything that we see here on earth because we were brought here in our vessel through flesh, but it's our spirit that is what drives this flesh. It is our spirit from whence we came. So to worship Anything here on earth is out of our nature. And, and what is worship? When we talk about in spirit and truth, in spirit, the very essence of our being, inner man, the spirit man, is having to do this worshiping. And we're not worshiping anything here on earth. And in truth, when we, when we read the word of God, literally from Genesis to Revelation, all of the word of God, we're directed into who our loyalty, allegiance, into who we are, and, and into what we should be worshiping. But what is worshiping? We worship in spirit and in truth, but worshiping is what we direct all of ourselves to. What is it that we're focusing on? What is it that we are giving our energy to. So when we talk about, you know, Lord God, right now, in Jesus name, I magnify you. I magnify you, Father. I lift you up. I give you power. I exalt you. Lord God, I praise you and I bless you. And we think, how can we give the Father power? He who is all powerful, omnipotent. How can we give him power? We are part of him. We're not him. This is not a uh, pantheistic view here. But we are able to give of ourselves. And, and worship is about giving. It's not about receiving. We do receive. And we do receive his wisdom and revelation in the process. And therefore, we're blessed because we come into intimacy and fellowship and relationship with him. And then we understand how to do his ways and how to, how to spend time with him and receive his glory. All this. But really, it's about giving. Giving the light that he gives us. Giving it back. Just honoring him. Honoring him. 
praising him through everything. Because the thing that we have to recognize is not to identify ourselves in this world and what we're going through. Because we're going to go through so much and more to come. But what is our focus on? So I had a fellow um, watcher, uh, someone that watches my videos, reach out to me today and talk about, they commented on a video I did over a year ago, and, and this happens here and there, And but they said, it's something I must have said in the video, they said that whining and complaining is worshiping Satan. And they said, good point. So obviously I said this in the video. And it's interesting because when I share with you, I share always on the fly. I never script anything. And quite frankly, even when I do a teaching, I'll jot down some scriptures I need to cover. But I allow the spirit to flow so it keeps it fresh. So the Holy Spirit's moving so God can speak. So I forgot I even said that. And actually it spoke to me this morning because of what was on me yesterday. What was on me yesterday that I knew I was going to share is that no matter what, we must worship God in whatever compa capacity that we can. So if we're incapacitated, we have to figure out what we do have. So it'd be the same as, you know, what can we be grateful for? What, what can, you know, in my day today, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what is going on, and I'm talking about no matter how severe it is, what can I be grateful for? What can I focus on that is good and pure and true and lovely? And let us focus on those things. This is imperative. It's, it's, a, it's not just a recommendation. It's the very essence of our faith because we cannot go by sight. We cannot go by feeling. We cannot go by pain because that's all of this world. What is it that God has for you? We will never know if we're focusing on what we see and feel. All the heartache, all the pain, all of it. It's just a distraction from what we should be doing. So this worshiping God, giving him power. So that means that I muster up whatever I can to give him whatever I can. So if I'm flat on my back, you know, if I'm used to standing up and praising God, you know, lifting up my hands, Lord God, I love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, who is to come. I lift you up. I magnify you. So if this is what I'm used to, but I'm stuck in a position on my back, then what do I do? How do I muster up the strength when I'm so focused on that I can't stand up? We have to come to him in whatever capacity we can. Literally, that is what we're called to do. And that restores and rectifies and corrects all things. So when you're going through a difficult time in a relationship, instead of looking at the circumstances and giving up, and I'm talking about a legitimate relationship that you're in, instead of giving up, you must fight the good fight of faith. But how do we do that? How do we receive from the Lord if we don't have a relationship with him? We're called to pray. We're called to give thanks, to petition supplication with thanksgiving and the peace that passes all understanding will come on to us. Sometimes it doesn't come in the way that we think. Back to whining and complaining, worshiping the enemy, the world, the earth, this world that we walk on, that we are birthed in is Satan's territory right now. He has reign over this. If we're worshiping things of the world that are not ordained by God, if our focus first and foremost is not on God and worshiping him, then what are we worshiping? Now, certainly there's room for, for crying, for, you know, going through our emotions and having a bad day, you know, an earnest sense of expression. That's not what I'm talking about with whining and complaining. I'm talking about what is our focus on? Where is the hope? Where is the faith? Jesus. 
Yeshua, God, Adonai Elohim, Yahweh. He is our hope and our faith, first and foremost. We must trust him through every trial. And though we may crawl, and though we may scream, and though we may struggle. You know, I thought yesterday about Paul in prison. What did he do, Paul in prison? What did he do? Could you imagine all of these people succumbing to the pressures of what they saw and felt? We might have our goals and our expectations, and we might have responsibilities. We might have things pressing on us right now, and we're wondering, how are we going to get out of this? I have things to do. I have responsibilities. People are depending on me. First and foremost, we must stop agonizing and reach out and open our voices. And you know what? If in the moment you can't talk, then do it in your head. Do what you can in the capacity you have. Kind of reminds me of, you know, they say, uh, for example, let's say you want a new car. It's like, if you can't even take care of the car you have, why would you be given something better? We must worship God in our circumstance and situation under all costs if we want to elevate and go to that next level, glory to glory to glory. And I know for a fact that when I go past my circumstances and I reach out to God, even as I am right now, me doing this and reaching out to you, I feel his presence. I feel the healing in his wings. I feel grace. I feel no feeling, but the presence of God. So right now, let's bear in mind, let us not worship our trials and tribulations by focusing on them and giving them more power. Let us worship the Lord God because not only is he deserving, it is our very connection to the Father. It is how we receive him, his words, his ways, receive revelation, our downloaded, everything we need in the moment. And he will make everything okay according to his plans and purposes and will. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for your revelation. I thank you for your healing. I thank you for delivering us out of the pit of the enemy. I thank you, Father, that at all times that our spirit can reach out to you. Lord God, and I just pray right now. I put my body in subjection to you, my mind in subjection to you. That I, because you know, scripture talks about the grass and the rocks. Excuse me, the grass and the rocks are going to be calling on the name of the Lord. They're going to be screaming the praises. And, and, and as we praise God, he inhabits the praises of his people. If you want your life to change, if you want direction, if you want healing, then praise God through everything. And it sounds so unorthodox. It sounds so against the grain that when your face is to the ground and you're sweating or you're pleading or you're struggling, when you're being humbled and you think, I should praise him now. I should rejoice in my sufferings. It's so not flesh-like. But if you want true and lasting change, transformation, and if you want to be in alignment with God, then worship him every day, no matter what, through pain, through heartache, through anger, through desperation, and even when you're at your worst. Lord God, right now, we worship you. We love you, Father, that you give us life that your light is shed upon us to eradicate darkness. And when we call out to you, when we beckon you, and just remember, you are not alone. There are some moments you might be praying and you feel it's nothing. It's nothing. You feel like it's not accomplishing anything. Then change your thinking and realize in that moment, 
you have an audience in the spiritual realm. You have angels around you, ministering spirits, agents of God around you. And you also have, if the presence of God is not thick in the moment, then there's also uh, demonic things around. But you know what? That's even more reason to call on the name of the Lord and declare who he is in your life, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Declare his word. He is good even when everything is so bad. Not on your strength. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But it's not on your strength that you're doing these things. Not by might or power, but by the spirit of the living God. Call on the name of the Lord. Right now, in the midst of your desperation, call on him. And I'm going to be doing a video soon about praying in the spirit and speaking in tongues. I'm going to do a few teachings on this because it's one of my passions. And to be honest with you, it is so good. It is so good because when you don't know what to pray, it, you pray for things that you know not that you ought. And it, it awakens and gives energy that you will need. So I just bless you right now in Jesus' name. May this, may this message to you be a blessing to you and shalom and healing to you in Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name. Amen. So I actually do want to share one snippet before I post the video. It was something I was thinking about. I always take a moment to think about what I just did in the video and see if I left anything out. And yeah, like the one point I wanted to make also is that Satan wants to receive worship. This is at the very core of his nature. Lucifer, the one who rebelled against God and wanted to be above God, wanted to be above him. So it is his very nature to want to take that from him. And my suggestion to you, for lack of a better word, is that I am suggesting that when you are on a roll or you're starting to gain victory or things are starting to move in your life or things are starting to come together, the enemy is going to come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he is. How can we neglect that in the word of God and, and think that we believers are exempt from that? If anything, he wants to take from you what you've got in the Lord and what the Lord has for you. So just remember that when you are in a place where whether it is that you're distracted or you're, you're suffering uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever it, burden that you have on you, when it's hitting you even harder than usual, keep in mind that Satan has tactics to do these things to prevent you from doing what you are called to do. First and foremost, worshiping God, praying to God, having intimacy, communion, and relationship with God. If that is suffering in your life, then you must take stock and inventory of what is going on in your life and recognize what is it that is pulling you from that relationship because that is a stronghold. That is something that is gaining that has gained access in your life and it could be something you don't even want in your life it could be a good thing in your life it it doesn't matter whatever that thing is for each person it's going to be different but i guarantee you once you identify it and you worship god regardless or in spite of it that that issue that burden is going to start disappearing like that that's how it works that's how the kingdom works. God has something for you regardless of what your circumstances look like. And God's not the problem. He's the antidote. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I had to add that in there. So again, God bless you. And let us move forward even if it doesn't look like what it should look like or what we expected it to look like, let us move forward and just allow God to work it all out. God 
needs us. This whole thing of God doesn't need us, eh, yeah. No, he doesn't need us so that he can survive. He doesn't need us. So he doesn't need us to function, but he uses us. Why would he, why would we be giving him power? Why would he use us as vessels? Why would we need to make contact point with another person? Why would we even lay hands on people if he didn't utilize and need us? So there is a bigger plan and purpose than we realize. We need to get our eyes off of this stuff and think about not only a bigger picture, but the God picture. God's not the enemy. God is not attacking us. God is saying, no, like, I'm right here. I'm right here. Come to me. Stay here. Trust me. No matter what's going on, just stay right here. Stay right here. Do you understand? Peace be still. It's not about giving up. He is our hope. Hope is not some frivolous term. He is our hope. So don't stop believing. Don't stop doing what you are called to do. Even if everything's completely changed and done. All right. God bless you. Thank you.